Okay. What's up, Alan? What's up, brother? Just trying to make sure I got everything good to go here. <clears throat> I think I do. I think it's fine. What's up? What's going on, Vicente? What's up, Chase? If I do it like that, I think that's fine. Um, let me see. I'm trying to make it a little bigger. One second. I know. What's up, bro? How you doing? Um, yeah, that works. That's good enough for me, I think. We can minimize this, right? Can I minimize that? Oh, I can put it over on this side? That's pretty sweet. Whoa. Oh, no, that was a horrible idea. I'm just going to X that out. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> Uh, let's go, Brian. Your dub today. What's up, gang? I'm gonna be slate looking nice, yes, sir. Sharp, the best chalker. Hey, now, be nice to Sharp. He's a goat. Keep it simple. Yep, keep it simple, <clears throat> for sure. I think we definitely kept it simple with that first slip that we put in today. Um, just the Nola and the Lance Lynn play. I think we definitely kept it simple there. And I think both plays were removed, which was pretty crazy. Um, but we haven't had a stream forever, I know. I didn't really want to stream basketball. Um, I had enough of basketball streams. Um, ch -ch 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 -ch. Quit looking at the nerd metrics. The nerd metrics are going to win us nerd money. No, it wasn't NFL. It was basketball. Uh, Y'all don't understand jokes. And it shows. Um, <clears throat> all right. So let's just go over this slate as we're going on. If you guys have any like questions or anything, <clears throat> feel free to chime in and we can go over it. Um, so we're just gonna kind of go game by game um, and go from there. So we have the Tigers and the White Sox first. Um, and this is an eight and a half total. We have uh, Kenta Maeda against Mike Soroka. Should be a decent amount of offense. I should pull up um, the weather here too, uh, just so we have that. So the winds are blowing out to center at 10 miles per hour. It's not crazy, but it'll make a little bit of an impact. The stack you made yesterday for the Mets Brewers would have smacked today. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was a rough one. But we almost got it in uh, the Yankees, Astros, and the Diamondbacks Rocky stack. That was, that was there. Um, oh, thank you so much. My man, um, I'm an idiot. It did already start. So we're going to go ahead and scratch off the Brewers and the Mets and the Tigers and the White Sox, considering both those games already started. So let's move on to the Angels and the Orioles game. We'll go from there. Yeah, that's why that's why we're on stream, because we can't really go outside for once on a Saturday in San Diego. I mean, you can, but why would you want to right now? All right, so the first game that we have is that we can talk about and play is going to be the Angels against the Orioles. The Orioles are minus 166 on the money line, 8.5 total. They have an implied team total of 4.75, where the Angels have an implied team total of 3.75. All that means is that of this total, based on the money line, this is the implied team total just for them. So the Orioles are projected to score 4.75 runs around there 
the Angels around 3.75. So those are the implied team totals, which kind of allows you to to decide if you want to stack that game or if you just want to kind of avoid it or if you want to play a pitcher from it. Um, all those things matter. So um, a team total anywhere over five is a good team total for just one team, not obviously for the entire game. But for just one team, an implied team total over five is solid, and we want to be on some of that offense if we can. So as we scroll down, we will go through each one of these games, but as we scroll down, um, you can see that none of these teams... All right, so the Reds are the first team that we see that have an implied team total over five, um, and theirs is at a 5.71, so... Expecting a lot of runs here on the red side, and I mean, I mean, it makes sense. They're going up against the Nationals and Patrick Corbin. So there should be plenty of offense for the red side. Um, as we go down here, um, the Rangers have an implied team total of 4.94 against Kyle Hendricks, another one that makes sense. Um, so the Rangers are an offense that we're going to want to stack, especially in a dome. That's a good hitter's park in Texas, so we like that. Um, the Astros offense should be decent again. They honestly didn't do great yesterday um, at all, but we had the right two players, which was nice. Um, we had Altuve and we had Bregman, who, who I know you guys love, but uh, he actually had a pretty good game for us yesterday. Um, Padres and Giants, this game should be pretty low scoring. Um, the Padres just threw out a tweet that they're going to try to play it. Um so hopefully the rain stops here pretty soon. And then the last two games in terms of offense that we want to look at is the Diamondback side. Again, they're going up against Austin Gomber, another just turkey tosser. The Diamondbacks are just absolutely killing the Rockies this series. Um, and it makes a lot of sense because the Rockies have no pitching. Um, Soroka live bet. I don't have anything up right now that I can live bet. I mean prize picks uh, under two and a half K's uh, through three innings but why do you want to do that um, and then the last one of the day is the Dodgers going up against Lance Lynn that's no surprise um, I'm guessing the Dodgers game probably the same as the Padres where the rain's going to stop here probably the next four hours or so and then they can try to play that game later okay so let's go through it let's go to the angels let's go to the orioles it is griffin canning against grayson rodriguez so i use this tool it's called plate iq um it's just fantasylabs.com slash mlb slash plate iq um all of this data is going to update after about like a week and a half or more maybe two weeks of data for now, we're just going to have to go off of last season, which is fine. <clears throat> Hold on, sorry. Um, so, let's start. <clears throat> let's start with the away team. So, Grayson Rodriguez, pretty good arm. Has really good stuff. Um, last year, he faced 301 righties, 230 lefties. He struck out 27% of righties and only 22% of lefties. So pretty average against lefties in terms of strikeouts. Uh, pretty good to above average in strikeouts versus righties. Um, in terms of how the righties hit him, it kind of goes on brand with his strikeout numbers. He does a lot better against right-handed hitters. He struggles more against lefties. The Angels, though... They don't have Otani anymore, and they don't have any good left-handed hitters. <laughs> they literally have Aaron Hicks, who's a switch hitter, and he's ass. And then Nolan Chenal, if that's how you say it, um, who hasn't proven anything in the big leagues yet. So Rodriguez is going to shove it down the Angels' throat today. Um <clears throat> Let's see what we can take for Grayson Rodriguez. This is like enough for me already to be all over it. Um, so they have his demon prop at six and a half. They don't have a regular 
strikeout prop. That that's my only gripe right now with prize picks. I love the fact that we've been able to make stacks that don't get nuked in terms of payout. But they should have like a regular line up here. But I guess the regular line would probably be six, so it's not that much of a difference. But if we go by the fantasy score, right? And there's a lot better way to do this. This is the very basic way to do it. But we can kind of calculate the fantasy score based on what we think where he's going to do. <clears throat> so if we think he's going to strike out six guys. You get three points for every strikeout. So six times three is 18. Okay. <clears throat> they think he's only going to go five innings. So 18 plus five or plus 15 is 33. Um, and then you go to earned runs allowed, and they think he's probably going to give up two. So if he does give up two, that's minus six. So that would take him down to 27, right? Um, so he'd be at 27 if he hits like all of his normal projections. But he's also got to be pretty solid to record a win here. So plus 170, and that's plus <clears throat> that's plus six. So that would put him at 33 points for his fantasy score. He's probably not going to get a quality start. If he does, <clears throat> he would have to throw six innings. If he throws six innings, he's going to soar over this pitcher fantasy score. Um, I do not hate this demon for Grayson Rodriguez at all. I think it's actually pretty good. Um, if we go back over here to plate IQ, the Angels don't have a whole lot of high strikeout guys other than Trout and Drury and then the bottom two guys. Um, so I'm not really sure if I'm like in love with it for strikeouts, but I do like the fantasy score today. I think he's going to shove it down the Angels' throat. <clears throat> I don't think the Angels are going to be able to do too much against Grayson Rodriguez. Let me just make sure the weather's okay. Oh, it's wet. It's never too heavy, but it's never really clear either. They may have to buck up and play most of the game in the rain. <sighs> Well, that's not great <clears throat> because if it goes into a rain delay, then that's not good for Grayson Rodriguez. What's his MLB live lineup? Two and a half through two innings. <clears throat> that's more of a play that we would want for innings two through three when he gets like Drury and Chanel and Hoppe and Zach Neto. That's probably when we want to take the MLB live line. So for now, let's put him at... <clears throat> The fantasy score we're not going to take any bats from the angels i'm not interested all right let's go over here to griffin canning um he's an okay arm as well he's a reverse splits guy so he gets hit harder by righties than he does lefties he also strikes out more righties than he does lefties as well but he should have a little trouble against the right-handed bats for the orioles however they're not going to throw out too many right-handed bats um, you're going to do four minutes well. You said more power to you, but then put out a bunch of six. I get it. We should have cashed last night in a mini stack. I need some small wins too, though. Will Grayson allow more than five hits? No, I, I, I don't think he will, no. Well, I mean, we're on his over fantasy score, so I, I don't think he's going to get hit hard. <clears throat> um, Let's go over here to Swish Analytics and see how the Orioles have done against Griffin Canning, if they've even had that many appearances. So not really. Um, so Austin Hayes is uh, two for five, or two for four with a home run. And Henderson's one, or two for three with uh, <clears throat> a single and a triple. <clears throat> See if they have anything up for the Orioles. Said the A word? What does that mean? So Adley, pretty solid. Austin Hayes, pretty solid. Um, and then they also have Gunner for total bases. Let's go over here to ball, Ballpark Pal, see what they have our Orioles friends at. Let's look at Austin Hayes first. So they have that pretty mid. 
Gunnar Henderson, they got him on the under. Okay, so nothing that's really popping there too much. Let's go over here. Let's see what they have in for hits, runs, RBIs. It's going to matter where he is in the lineup. He's hitting sixth. That's not a bad spot to hit in the Orioles lineup. Yeah, he's minus 125. I kind of like Adley, though. I mean, it's not a horrible fantasy score right here. It's actually pretty solid. Um, he's minus 145 on over one and a half HRR. <clears throat> Let's see what they have over here for Adley. So they like his under. Um, okay. So <clears throat> I think if we're going to play anything from the Orioles side, we're probably just going to play Hayes. Um, I don't really love it enough to like make that a core play. Um, but <clears throat> that's an interesting little play there. Adley Rutschman, one for three with a double off Griffin Canning. I mean, there should be plenty of offense. So uh, we go over here. Let's see. This kind of helps us with fantasy score. Yeah, okay. I don't think the, pro the projections really matter. I told you Adley doing 5% of the time. I told you Adley doing 5% of the research. <laughs> Congratulations, brother. You're on to something. Um, okay, so those are the only two from that game that I really like. Let's move on to... Um, I like Santander, but there's no lines for him. There's only demon lines for him. Um, <clears throat> so, if you want to take a demon line on him, you could. All right, let's move on to the Braves and the Phillies... Max Fareed, pretty solid numbers last year. Um, he strikes out a lot of lefties, average amount of righties. Um, it's kind of a tough one. I don't. I think that the Phillies will have decent offense today, but it's hard with Fareed. Let's see how they have done against him. JT Realmuto has done well. He's hitting 381 over 42 at bats. Trey Turner hitting 395 over 38 at bats. Bryce Harper's hitting 303. Not bad. Nick Castellanos just destroys this man. Nine for 14 with a home run and seven singles. Hitting 643 off Max Freed. Whoa. Do they have anything for us for Nick Castellanos? Of course they don't. They just have demons. I don't mind this total bases number, though, <clears throat> for Castellanos. That's not bad. Trey Turner, I think they, oops, I think they still have the one and a half HR. Yeah, they do. And then I like... Bryce okay as well for fantasy score. I believe they bumped him down to six and a half. And if they did, I don't mind that. Yeah. This isn't bad here for Harper. And then um, Trey Turner is at one and a half. And Castellanos total base is at one and a half. And Real Muto, they have him for one and a half HR as well. So it's not like... It's not really a great stack spot, as you guys can tell, 3.77 implied total. It's not great, but um, Trey Turner is at minus 125 over one and a half. JT Real Muto is at minus 125 on the under. Harper minus 125 on the under. Let's see how juiced this total basis is for Castellanos, because I wouldn't mind taking a stab here. Plus 145. It's not awful. Um, if we were to play a demon, it would probably be him. So let's just go ahead and throw that in for now, and then we'll go from there. Um, just so I remember that we liked it. I'm not sure if I'll play it or not, but I just want to make sure that I keep it in there because uh, I like it. All right. Um, for the Brave side of things... What was Freed's fantasy score at? 
Oh, they don't. Oh, they do. It's at 28 and a half. That's not horrible. 28 and a half for Fareed. Five strike outs is 15. 16, 31. Gives up two runs, probably. That's like 26 fantasy points. It's not awful. Um, okay, let's go to the Brave side of things and let's see what we're working with here. So Nola, obviously a pretty good arm. Pretty average in terms of his strikeout numbers last year, about 25% on both sides. Um, <clears throat> and he gets hit pretty much the same from both sides. I think lefties um, are able to hit him a little harder in terms of slugging percentage. He's got 29% fly ball rate against lefties, whereas only 23 against righties. Um, but this hard hit percentage is at 52% for right-handed hitters. Um, this is more of a spot where we want to look at how the Braves have fared against him rather than just going off of all that. Um, Austin Riley's done really well against him. He's 22 for 57, five jacks, hitting 386. Acuna's hitting 346 off him. Um, and that's pretty much it in terms of guys that are really hitting him super hard um, are Acuna and Austin Riley, which checks out. Um, Azuna has done pretty well against him as well. I think if you're going to play the Braves, you're playing Acuna. You're probably playing... Uh, you're probably... If you don't want a Demon, you're probably playing the Fantasy score. You could play Total Bases as well. But um, I I would probably play the Fantasy score just because he can get this without getting two Total Bases. He can get a single. He can steal. That's plus eight. He can score. That's ten points just right there. Cash Luis Robert. Home run. Nice. I don't have any plays from those two morning games, so good shit, dude. Off of who? Is that Soroka? No, they're on the same team. <clears throat> Off Maeda. Whoa. That was a ballsy play by you, but a good play. Good job. Good pick, brother. Okay, Carpenter, Riley Green scores. I just took it straight up. Hell yeah, dude. Love it. That was a good pick. I mean, obviously, it worked. <laughs> um, that's awesome, dude. Good job. All right. Um, da -da 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 -da. So, yeah. I think if you wanted to play the Braves, you're playing Acuna and you're playing Austin Riley. So I, I don't know if I'm going to be super exposed to either of these guys. Um, just because it is Austin Nola at the end of the day and there's better spots. Right? Um, but if you wanted to play the Braves, uh, if you want to, I probably won't, but if you want to, it's Austin Riley over one and a half HRR, and it's um, Acuna over fantasy score or over total bases. I, I would play just the fantasy score, though. I'm probably going to avoid the Braves. I just don't have a good feel of them right now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and avoid that spot, but if you want to, those are the two plays that I would play from that game. Okay. Um, I don't know if the Guardians and the A's are going to be able to play today. Looks a headlock better than did yesterday. Man, you get a chance for a delay. So there's probably going to be a delay in this game, but they'll probably play it through. Uh, Tanner BB is reverse splits, and so is Zach Geloff. So if we're playing anybody from the A's, it's Zach Geloff. Um, and of course, they don't have anything up here for him because... Their prize picks, so why would they? That's mean. They've been fine. They've been fine. Um, but no, I wouldn't play any of these. Yeah, I think I'm probably going to subscribe to it. 
Mr. Goodnight. It's it's pretty solid. It's a pretty good tool. Um, okay, so yeah, the A side of things. That's all I would really play. Um, and they don't have anything up there for us. And those lines suck too. I, I don't know what's going on with these lines in terms of the amount that they have. I guess they don't want us to play this game. Uh, JP Sears, he's pretty ass. Um, he's just not a good pitcher. Uh, the hard rate percentage is way higher against righties. So is the fly ball percentage. So if anyone's going to go yard, it's probably a right-handed hitter. Um, the Guardians lineup is really mid, though. Other than J-Ram, it's pretty, pretty mid. So we can see what they have. But if Jose Ramirez fantasy score, it's probably fine. Ramon Liriano over one and a half total base is probably fine. But it's going to be cold, and it's not. I'm good. I'm just good. I, I'm not playing this. We can move on. Um, all right, let's move on to the Twins and the Royals game. Joe Ryan, one of my favorite pitchers, going up against Seth Lugo, who was on the Padres last year. Uh, Joe Ryan, he's got a 32% strikeout rate against righties. He will face one, two, three, four, five. Five out of nine hitters today will be right-handed hitters. The Royals have a pretty low strikeout percentage as a team. It's only 18.9%. That's pretty good. Um, he's also a reverse splits guy. He gets hit harder by righties. So that's probably Bobby Witt. That's probably Salvador Perez. <clears throat> I think one of those two guys actually does pretty well against Joe Ryan. Let's see. Salvi Splash. Yeah, I could see it. Let's see. Joe Ryan. So, uh, Salvi's three for ten with a bomb. No. No home run. Just three for ten with a single and a double. Renfro's two for three. Bobby Witt. Oh, Bobby Witt's the guy that gets owned by Joe Ryan. He's one for 16 off Joe Ryan. It's pretty small sample size, but that's like five different games of just getting dominated. Um... What's Joe Ryan at? Do we have any good lines for him? Six and a half strikeouts. No regular line. Fifteen and a half pitching outs. Twenty-nine and a half fantasy score. So fifteen plus sixteen. Joe Ryan over fifteen and a half is not bad. It's not bad at all. Yeah, that's pretty interesting to go with Joe Ryan over 15 and a half pitching outs. Um, let's see the walk numbers for them. So he doesn't walk too many guys, and the Royals don't walk. So I could see him going pretty... And by pretty deep, I mean like six innings because um, it is the first start of the season for him. Um, but as long as he got stretched out in spring training, just make sure that he did get stretched out enough. And I'm sure he did if his line is all the way up there, but... Yeah, he did. He pitched 80 pitches and then 72 pitches. So he's good for like mid 80s to low 90s. Um, okay. Yeah, I think we've seen enough. I like Joe Ryan over 15 and a half pitching outs for sure. That's a that's a nice little play right there. Um, that's what I'm gonna do. <clears throat> I'm going to play Joe Ryan over 15 and a half pitching outs. How do I feel about his fantasy score? Yeah, it's not bad, especially if we want if we think that he's going to pitch 6 innings. So, it would be 5 plus 18, so 33 
15 plus 18 is 33, plus 4 for a quality start is 37. Gives up two runs, he's at 31. He gets a win, he's at 37. So, yeah, I mean, I think either of those are pretty good. Um, I think I prefer the pitching outs. Um, but Joe Ryan over fantasy score is not bad either. Um, but I'm going to keep it at pitching outs right now. That's one of my favorite plays, actually. I think this is really solid. Okay. Um, let's check the Twins' bats, see if we want anything here. Lugo's a pretty solid pitcher. He does well against right-handed pitchers. He struggles, or right-handed hitters. He struggles a little bit against lefties. Um, I can check on Nerfies. Give me one sec. Uh, Kirilov, singles, no. Why is that the only line available? Matt Walner over a base? Matt Walner over one base? I like him to go friggin' yard today. He's over a base? Yeah. I mean, really? Give me Matt Walner over a base, bro. What the hell? <clears throat> All right, so we have five plays so far that I like. This Hayes and this Castellanos play, we'll see about. These bottom two so far are my favorite. As long as the weather's okay in this Orioles game, then I like the fantasy score for Grayson Rodriguez, but I just don't want the game to get delayed because then we're screwed. <clears throat> All right, um, Matt Walner's like... One of my favorite plays of the day so far. That's why these uh, streams are good, because then I'm able to go through everything with you guys. And I find plays. All right, Nationals and the Reds. Let's start with the Nationals, because the Reds are just going to score 100 runs today. Um, Hunter Green is a strikeout machine. Um, he strikes out 35% of lefties, 28% of righties. He gets hit hard. I mean, it's because he throws so hard, but he gets hit hard um, when people make contact, especially against righties, which is interesting. Um, I wonder how any of these guys have done against him. It's just like... I doubt anyone's had any success. There's only been one guy, and he's one for six, yeah. So they haven't even faced him yet. Thirty-one and a half fantasy score. A seven and a half demon for him. Two and a half earned runs. He's just a strikeout guy for me always. I don't feel like super confident touching any of these he probably stays under earned runs allowed but the implosion could definitely happen with hunter green what's his strikeout what's his normal strikeout prop at he's favored over six and a half did he get stretched out in spring let me double check You like Ramirez fantasy score? Eh, it's all right. Um, I just don't really like that game, Sharp. Um, but if I was going to play anybody from the Guardians, it would be him. So, yeah, I mean, it's fine. If you if you like it, go for it. Uh, these numbers can't be right. These are the numbers that were not properly tracked by StatCast because there's no way he only threw 23 pitches, so that's not going to help us at all. I don't know. I think I'm probably going to avoid Hunter Green today. Um, if I was, if I were to do anything, I would just take the strikeout prop right here. Um, I'd just play the demon strikeout prop. It's just, nah. I'm okay, though. I, I'm not going to touch it. I don't feel great about it. All right, let's go over here to the Reds. Patrick Corbin, as you guys know, he doesn't strike anybody out. Or if you don't know, he doesn't strike anybody out. He gets hit really hard by righties. Um, 
I mean, everybody can hit Patrick Corbin. He's not throwing hard. So, I mean, if Prize Picks had any lines available, it would be awesome. We like Steer. We like India. Um, they got to have, like, a fantasy score up for one of these guys, don't they? So total bases for Strands, one and a half. Ellie De La Cruz is at nine and a half fantasy score when he's batting sixth and the game's at home. Interesting. Jammer Candelario. Why don't why do they not have any like just normal lines up for these guys? Like they know that they're gonna they're gonna smack. That's frustrating though. They want you to play De La Cruz. And it doesn't mean that he's not going to have a good game, but they, like, they're like they trying to get everybody to play him by not having any other options here. Like, why can't we have, like, a fantasy score for Steer India? You know? It's kind of annoying. But Spencer Steer over bases is at minus 105. Let's see. Patrick Corbin. Ellie De La Cruz is three for six off him with a bomb. Jonathan in, Jonathan India is uh, four for eight with a home run. Tyler Stevenson hits him pretty well. Steer is two for four with two singles and two walks. I think Jonathan India hits a home run, bro. You heard it here first. I think Jonathan India goes yard today. Is that plus 400 to hit a home run? Oh, really? They took him off? We only have home runs, doubles, stolen bases, and walks for Jonathan India. What if Jonathan India just hits a freaking moonshot today? Because I think he's probably going to. Let me write these plays down because I'm going to begin to put them. Or can I just like, can I screenshot them? All right, I screenshotted them. That way uh, I can have them up there. Or I can keep them up there. This pays 8x. Probably should pay more. I have all the plays that we already talked about. I, I screenshotted them, so I didn't forget about them. All right, let's just keep going. The Rays and the Blue Jays will come back and we'll make some slips in a second. So Blue Jays and Rays. Kikuchi against Zach Little. Uh, Kikuchi is a good strikeout guy. 28% against lefties, 25 against righties. If he's going to get hit hard, it's against righties. The Rays don't strike out a ton. They have about four guys that are going to strike out. Um, I don't know. It's pretty mid. Let's see if anybody hits him well. Only five at bats. None of these guys have a whole lot of experience. Yandy Diaz and Harold Ramirez hit him decent. Um, but yeah, don't love it. Uh, Kikuchi. Well, hold on one second. Let me show you guys something. Let's go over here by the home run zone. So, Great American Ballpark, this shows you where they think the home runs are going to come from. So, they project 1.7 home runs for the national side of things against Hunter Green. They project 1.77, so almost two home runs for the Reds today. Um, they think someone's going deep in the Yankees and Astros game. They got the Dodgers projected for two home runs. Someone's definitely going yard off Lance Lynn, let's be honest. 
All right. That was, I just wanted to show you guys that real fast. I think that's interesting. Let's look at the park factors real fast. Ball is going to fly out, and it's flying out to left field, which is perfect for the lefties. Um, this was good for our guy in here who bet on Luis Robert to hit a home run, plus 12%. That obviously came to fruition. Let's see. Jonathan India, 1.131. That's freaking solid. Steer, 1.21. Yeah, bro. I think India is hitting a freaking moonshot today. Uh, Citizens Bank's playing at minus 8 home run, but plus, or minus 3 for a double, too. It's not awful. Um, okay. Where were we? We're not going to take anybody here. Um, what's Kikuchi's lines at? Five and a half strikeouts for a demon. It's not terrible. Not going to take the fantasy score. Um, strikeouts for Kikuchi. Plus 110. It's not awful. I mean, it's, it's really not bad, but we're good. We're going to avoid that for now. Um, let's go over here to the uh, Blue Jays. Zach Little, pretty average pitcher. Very low strikeout rate. He strikes out lefties at a 23 clip, but um, only 17% of righties. This is an interesting lineup that the Blue Jays are throwing out today. I like Vlad a decent amount today. Um, Vlad is, yeah, two for three off him. Kirk is two for two. Varsho is three for seven. Bo Bichette's two for four. So very small sample sizes with these guys. Um, let's see. Mm, nothing good up for Bo Bichette. George Springer, 8 fantasy score. Vlad at 7.5 fantasy score is not bad. <sighs> Meh. Alright. Um, Marlins and the Pittsburgh Pirates. Jared Jones against Ryan Weathers. How much mid is too much mid? Jared Jones has no data to go off of at all. Ryan Weathers used to be a Padre. He's not good. Um, gives up a lot of hard contact. Lefties are actually hitting him even harder than righties in terms of just consistent contact. But righties are have a better Woba, but the lefties hit for more power. O'Neill Cruz. Can I can I interest you in O'Neill Cruz today? One and a half total base demon prop. Yeah, that's not bad. Honestly, any of these Marlins guys are probably pretty good plays. Let's see. Um, Edward Olivares, another Padre, is hitting fourth today. Wow. That's something, man. Jazz over one and a half HRR is not bad. He's he's hitting fourth. Wait. Whoops. That's my bad. I should be looking at the Pirates right now. Uh, Connor Joe over one and a half. I don't feel like Prize Picks is allowing us the full board right now. They don't want us to play everything. Connor Joe is four for six off Ryan Weathers with two home runs. Whoa. Connor Joe. Let's 
So he has total bases. I'm interested on that. Plus 140 total bases. Minus 125 HRR. It's not bad. It's not bad. And then on the Pirate side, we liked O'Neill Cruz over one and a half total bases for a demon. I mean, if he's going to get a hit, he's probably going to launch it. So. Uh, we do like Connor Joe for HRR, though. So let me note that. All right, cool. We're not going to touch any of those pitchers. I think unless Ryan Weathers has like a hit prop because he's going to get hit hard. He doesn't. He only has a strikeout prop and two walks allowed. Okay, we're good. Uh, Cubs and the Rangers. This is one of the games that's probably going to have a lot of offense. Kyle Hendricks, pretty mid pitcher. Doesn't strike out a whole lot of guys, but throws a lot of strikes. Um, righties have fared a little better against him than lefties. Um, I can see why. So Simeon, Adolis Garcia, Josh Young, all solid options today. Um, what's his name? Kyle Hendricks, my bad. Kyle Hendricks. Jankowski, stud. He played really well the other day. Uh, also another former Padre. Marcus Simeon is 3 for 6 off and with 2 bombs. Corey Seager is 0 for 11. Yeah, that's pretty funny. And then that's about all we have. Um, Marcus Simeon... Eight fantasy score. He's probably scoring today. Zero and a half runs. Adolis Garcia, seven and a half fantasy score. Okay, let's see. Simeon to score is about average. Adolis Garcia. That seems wrong, man. Really. gonna say that's probably a good play. Simeon score run minus 120. Huh. What else do they have for us on the Rangers side? Seeger, they have Evan Carter for us. Jonah Heim. They don't have a lot. Let me screenshot these demon plays that we like real fast. Evan Carter's probably gonna hit fourth. Yeah, this is this is the stack right here. So it would be runs and then fantasy score here. It's a little mini stack right there that I like. Um, and then Uh, not really anything that we can take, unfortunately, for Kyle Hendricks, which is probably fine. Um, but these are two that I like on the Rangers side of things, for sure. Let's look at this side of the ball. Cody Bradford, pretty simple splits guy. He does well against lefties, gets hit hard by righties. Suzuki and Morrell, good options. Dansby Swanson, good option. Uh, let's see what they have. Morel to hit a home run. Demon prop. Morel HRR, one and a half, not bad. Um, Dansby Swanson, HRR, not bad. Madrigal, one and a half. Say a Suzuki, seven fantasy score.
all of those are pretty good. Let's see, Chicago Cubs. Bellinger over HRR is minus 130 on DraftKings. Say Suzuki over seven fantasy score. Nico Horner. Christian Morrell, one and a half. All right. <clears throat> Well, for now, let's take Simeon and let's take Adolis Garcia for sure. Um, and a little stack here. We like those two. Simeon. Garcia, seven and a half fantasy. I think this is one that we could do a little mini game stack on for a 4X type situation. Um, Say Suzuki's probably going to hit third, right? He's going to hit second. Yeah, I wouldn't mind taking Say Suzuki and then Morel over one and a half HRR and then calling that good. Um, let's see. So say Suzuki, yeah, good play over seven fantasy score, and then um, Morel's only minus one fifteen, which is average, but honestly, I think it's a good spot for him. So if we would take, it's kind, it kind of seems a little forced. So I might not do a full stack of this game and just use these two, and see if we can find another game to stack it with. All right, let's move on to the Yankees and the Astros. This is all for good, don't worry. I have all these plays either screenshotted or written down. We'll build some plays after this. So Stroman doesn't strike out too many people, but um, he also doesn't give up a whole lot of home runs. He keeps the ball on the ground. Um, so he's kind of a hard guy to like predict home runs against. Stroman has only given up two home runs to this lineup, and it's against Jose Abreu in 28 at-bats and Altuve in 12. Um, Hunter Brown on the other side also doesn't give up a whole lot of fly balls. When he does get hit hard, he gets hit hard by righties. Um, so seems probably like an Aaron Judge type day. Um, Hunter Brown, Aaron Judge, two for three off of him. I'm sorry, he's one for two off of him. Glaber Torres. Oh, so Judge has taken him yard. Uh, Marcus Stroman is pitching for the Yankees today. Judge over a home run, Judge over eight and a half fantasy score. Or one and a half total bases, yeah. The Stroh Show. Yeah, I wouldn't mind taking an over fantasy score for Judge. Um, also, would not be surprised if he goes yard today either. He's only plus 195 to hit a home run. <laughs> That's pretty wild. Plus 195 to hit a bomb. Um, but overall, I don't mind fantasy score here for Aaron Judge um, at 8.5. It's not bad. So, just... <sighs> I feel like it's a demon play, though. It's like a home run or bust type situation because I don't really want to play him as a one-off. We'll come back to it if we want to play it. Cease against Jordan Hicks. I don't know if... Yeah, they don't have any props up for Dylan Cease. They don't... They have, like, a ton of demon stuff up for this game, but they don't really have any, like, regular lines. That's super weird. They, they probably don't think it's going to play today, but apparently they're going to try. So 
we're just going to have to avoid that one for now because there's not anything we can really do with it. Uh, Rockies and Diamondbacks. This is a stack situation for the Diamondbacks side again. Austin Gomber, reverse splits guy, which is not good because the Diamondbacks are not going to really play any lefties other than Carroll and Alec Thomas. And Corbin Carroll, doesn't, he's, he does a lot better against right-handed right handed pitchers. Um, but it's not like he doesn't get hit hard by righties. And Christian Walker and Lourdes Gurriel and Cattell Marte and Gabriel Moreno and Eugenio Suarez. Like the, <laughs> It sucks as a Padre fan, but the Diamondbacks are good, dude. They have a good lineup for sure. And uh, they kind of come at you from one through nine. Like there's not a whole lot of weaknesses in that lineup. Um, Austin Gomber. This is kind of hard to look at because a lot of, like probably half of these are coming in Coors Field. And um, if you guys don't know, playing at home um, for the Rockies, their field, like super high elevation. So balls just fly out of there. Um, it's a really good ballpark to hit into. Uh, has really big outfields, so a lot of balls drop. So, yeah. but So this game is in Arizona. Um, but anyways, Marte is hitting 438. Christian Walker's hitting 364. Moreno and Jock Peterson are both 2-for-2, two two, hitting 1,000. Eugenio Suarez, 2-for-10 with a home run. Um, Corbin Carroll, 1-for-2. I know he burned us last night, but it really wasn't his fault because he should have cleared. Um, but Blaze Alexander over one and a half HRR. Christian Walker over one and a half total bases. That's not bad. Corbin Carroll's fantasy scores at nine today. Um, Eugenio Suarez over one and a half HR, also not bad. Cattell um, Marte is at nine fantasy score, two and a half HRR, not even a demon play, just a regular line. So the offense is definitely going to come, right? It's just how do we attack it? No, I have them all. Um, either screenshotted or written down. So we're just doing an overall view of the entire slate first, and then um, um, and then we will make all the slips that we want to make. We'll make some two men, and then we'll also make some... Uh, also make some six picks. Um, and then we wanted to look at Christian Walker, total bases, hitting mid, Marte. Okay, let's see. Let's look at Suarez first. That line seems like the one that's popping the most to me right now. Eugenio Suarez is minus 120. It's not going to move the needle. Total bases for Christian Walker. Minus 105. <laughs> A little tough to attack. Let's go over here to the Rockies side. Let's see what they have up for Gomber. Is there anything we can just take Gomber on if we can't take Diamondbacks props? They have him as a goblin for five and a half hits allowed. That's super disrespectful because that's a pretty high line. <laughs> That'd be fun, dude. I've been to Coors once, but it wasn't for a game. I just uh, toured the stadium. But... It's a, it's a cool park, man. Austin Gomber over one and a half walks. Um, that could be kind of interesting. Walks allowed. Austin Gomber one and a half. Hmm. There's a reason it's on the prize picks board, right? Okay. 
a bummer because I really want to play the Diamondbacks game, but I might have to play it on Sleeper because the Prize Picks Lions aren't really allowing us to do it. Tommy Henry for the Diamondbacks doesn't strike out a whole lot of guys. Gets hit harder by righties in terms of hard hit percentage. Gives up more fly balls to righties. Um, but in terms of Woba, um, just ex expected on base average and all that. The Rockies lineup's just really mid, but um, they should have a decent chance for offense tonight. Brendan Rodgers, of course, just demon lines. Charlie Blackman, don't really want to do that. Elias Diaz, one and a half HR, that's fine. Nolan Jones, one and a half HR, also fine, but not great. Yeah, for sure. We'll, we'll definitely play something over there on Sleeper. Now that we're getting like an idea of the entire slate, we'll kind of know what we want to do. Yeah, just gross, man. All right, Cardinals and Dodgers. Lance Lynn gets killed by lefties, gets killed by righties. Gives up more fly balls to lefties, though, so... This is definitely either, I mean, the Dodgers are going to just kill Lance Lynn tonight. Um, let's see what we have to work with on the Dodgers side. Freddie Freeman over 8.5 fantasy score. Not bad. I, is James Outman still at a base? Uh, they took him off. We were about to go back to that. James Outman well. Uh, Jason Hayward, Max Muncy over one and a half HR. It's a good play. Um, we like the lefties to go deep today. I don't think Shohei's gone yard yet this season, right? It's probably tonight. Um, over an RBI is actually pretty good too. Uh, Shohei over one and a half total bases. That's just a regular line, huh? That's probably pretty good. Will Smith over one and a half HR is good too. He just bats in a really good part of the lineup to drive in runs. Um, yeah. We can just stack this up pretty good. Shohei's minus 130 total bases, not surprising. This is HRR, Max Muncy minus 110. Will Smith minus 130. Is Will Smith that he is? All right, what if we did, this is one that we might just wanna just build out really quick. Otani, total bases. What do we have for Freeman? Runs, zero, 0 0.5. RBIs is a demon. Uh, could do Freddie Freeman fantasy score. Let's just see. I mean, all these guys probably do well against him. Mookie Betts. Oh, whoops. Shohei is 10 for 23. Jason Hayward is 10 for 24. Freddie Freeman. Oh, he's actually not doing super well against him. Max Muncy is only 1 for 2 with a double. What'd they have Jason Hayward at? Nothing good, unfortunately.
Lance Lynn's probably not striking out four Dodgers. Will it let us do that? Will it let us stack it like that? I mean, I don't know how he's going to strike out four Dodgers. I guess Muncie and Teoscar and James Altman, but I just don't see it. He just has completely lost it. And that works. We could do that. All right, do we want Max Muncie or do we want one of the big three? Do we want Mookie or Freddie Freeman to go along with? Will Smith over HR, Jason Hayward under strikeouts. Shohei over bases. I feel like we're on the right ones already. Would it let us do that or it will probably change out the payout a little bit? Let's see. It does. Okay, it makes it to 23x if we do that. Makes sense. Um, honestly, Muncie's probably fine. Um, whoa, why does it look like that? I think that's a pretty solid stack and probably what we should do because those are two of my favorite offenses from tonight the rangers and the dodgers so let's get this in otani and will smith are ones that we can play as one-offs in other stacks these two on the rangers kind of go together i kind of want to play them as a slip together so What's up, babe? Um, Will Smith. And then Muncie. Kind of like Muncie to get an RBI, but uh, we'll just play it safe and we'll take a hits, runs, RBIs. See what would happen if we took an RBI. Could go to a 38x if we took an RBI. I mean, he's got to be in the spot, man. You gotta be in a good spot to drive it around. Uh, we already talked about the Braves. Um, the only two plays that I would play from the Braves are Acuna fantasy score and Austin Riley over one and a half HRR. So if you wanna do that, by all means, I think it's solid. All right, just made this one. Gonna send it out to you guys right now. What's up, Daniel? More slips are coming other than this. I just wanted to get this stack correlation out to you guys. Two of my favorite offenses today. Yamamoto, live Ks, two and two innings. Probably pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad. We kind of got to get moving here. Uh, some of these games are starting soon. Um, okay, let me go over here to the Cardinal side. Um, okay, and then the last game was going to be the Mariners and the Red Sox.
So Cutter Crawford, pretty good K rate. Um, doesn't really get hard, doesn't get hit hard by uh, either side. If he does, it's lefties, but it's really not bad. Um, pretty solid K rate, 25%, 26%. The Mariners strike out a decent amount. Um, it's not bad. Oh, I'm still on MLB Live. That three and a half line is probably not bad though, but well, of course they don't have just a regular line for him. Um, let's see. Cutter Crawford, five and a half, so six strikeouts is what he's projected to get. And he's only projected to go five. I like this MLB Live line for him. Um, over three and a half for Cutter Crawford probably gonna use that we're gonna put all these together in a second um, okay so Cutter Crawford over three and a half pitcher strikeouts for that game good and then Boston side Logan Gilbert solid pitcher I don't really want anything from the Red Sox against Logan Gilbert um, let's see Seventeen and a half pitching outs, six and a half strikeouts, four and a half hits low. <clears throat> nice. Okay, um, we like that. We're gonna take this. Okay, let me go to my screenshots real fast. Where did I screenshot all my plays that I was on? So Gunner, 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 Grayson Rodriguez, pitcher fantasy score. Matt Walner, we really liked. And then those were demons. Is there anything else? I could have sworn there's more than that. Okay. Um, let me make sure there's no updates here for this Baltimore game yeah no I got Joe Ryan up there um, I just there was like four of those that I really wanted to play Let's go ahead real quick. Let's get this in first. Um, this is gonna be a two man that I wanna get in. So let's play this. Get this out. this out to you guys. This is a two man for Seattle Boston tonight. Get that in there for you guys. Okay. All right. Um, and then sure I didn't miss anything. Yeah, the reason we're on that one is that he's projected for six strikeouts, um, but he's only gonna he's only projected to pitch five innings, so um, he should be able to get four and three innings, uh, considering he's only supposed to throw five innings, and they have him projected to go over five and a half pretty heavily. So I think that's good um, for him. I'm to, I want to play Grayson Rodriguez. I'm just worried about this weather situation. Do you guys have any context at all about this weather for this Orioles game? Cloudy. 
cloudy weather. It's going to be bad. Middle to end of the game. Okay. So probably not till the end. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and roll the dice because we just need like five or six solid innings out of him. Grayson Rodriguez probably is um, okay to go to today. Okay. Take me off of just the Dodgers. I don't need any more just Dodger plays anymore. Thank you, though. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to go Grayson Rodriguez. Um, I know we like Joe Ryan, Mal Walner. And then did we want to, oh yeah, we want to go with Tani. Okay, so we have Joe Ryan, 15 and a half pitching ounce. Don't mind this as a two man at all. Uh, Walner, this is just gonna be my most confident six man though. Um, Tani. And then we want to take Cutter Crawford. Spell your name with the K, my bad, bro. And then Logan Gilbert. Fire. Get this in. This is nice. Send this out to you guys. Sent that one out to y'all. Uh, beautiful. And then I wanted to do, let's see my screenshots. Castellanos, India, O'Neill Cruz. Is Otani over two and a half total bases or Otani to hit a home run better? That goes to a 53x. Let's see if I just put in like two of my other favorite plays without it, if it would. So let's go, uh, let's go Joe Ryan and then. Why is there so many Ryans, dude? Does it make sense? Joe Ryan over 15 and a half along with, um, Logan Gilbert, 17 and a half, with Otani Song. 79x. Home run, 200x.
Total bases, 79x. Home run, 100x. What if I just played it as a four man? 68x, 4x. So Gilbert. Take Gilbert out of here, Walner, and then we go Cruz. Seventy five X like this. Um, hmm. Gilbert, whoa, popping. Love to see that. I feel like that's almost too much exposure to Logan Gilbert, though, no? Um, that would be in... How many slips is he already in? He's already in two slips. Otani would be in three. Okay. We don't want to overexpose ourselves too much.
I don't know. <laughs> to be honest with you, I, I'm not sure. Um, I think it's all right. Um, I, I just don't really, I'm not into, into that stat. I don't, I, I can't read too much into how many pitches a guy's going to throw in one inning. It really, there's so many factors to it. So it's really uh, driven by by variance, so I can't tell you for sure on that. Yeah, I did. I coach high school baseball now. Um, I don't know why I'm spending so much time on a lotto slip like this. Okay. Uh, only two years. Only two years. I don't think so, to be honest with you. Um, I just don't think it really fits my lifestyle. I'm not sure if I would be a good college baseball coach, to be honest with you. Not sure if I would have, um, if I'd be able to be that great of a college baseball coach. Maybe at like a D3 school or something, but probably not. All right, we're going to run this, dude. Why not, you know? Fun little lotto here. Cassianos to get two bases. Nola to get 16 outs. Rodriguez to strike out seven. O'Neal Cruz to get two bases. India to go yard. <laughs> it's a pretty crazy slip. But you know Jonathan India is going to hit a home run now that I'm, like, debating on playing it. What if I just play it as a four? You're a chill guy. 
Thank you. Yes. Um, I need a five dollar bet. Okay. Well, this is your five dollar bet. Um, I think we're just gonna do this. Just call it a fifty-two x. I mean, why would we do that? Why would we do that when we can go for the moon? I keep changing this back and forth. Let's just let's just go for it, man. I mean, why not, right? Um, there was one more guy at 105. Who was at 105? It was crew. Oh, it's Rodriguez. The timing on here it needs to be right, or it's gonna make me mad. Um, Cruise India. What was did Connor Joe have a demon? If I take Connor Joe instead of O'Neill Cruz, is that gonna make this a one hundred X payout instead? Let's see. Oh no, I think it's gonna go down. It does, it goes down, okay. Fuck it, we ball. Seven X. Is still okay. Cool. All right, I think that's pretty good. I mean, um, we got in a couple two men and then some 25 X's. Pretty good, I think, in terms of uh, all the picks, top two that you love. Um, so this right here is probably my favorite slip. So I like, my probably my favorite two are Logan Gilbert and Joe Ryan, both over pitching outs, followed by Grayson Rodriguez third, Otani fourth, Crawford fifth, Walner sixth. That's probably probably my favorites. Um, so based on everything that we talked about. Um, the Orioles are gonna fucking roll the Angels today. Uh, the Reds. And the Dodgers. I'm gonna put those three into a... Oh, we just got a tweet from Kevin Roth. Where'd he go? What did my man say? Okay. Um... I really need a W and better. Dude, we had, I'm glad we took advantage of that app at the beginning, but um, 
They've been on their shit lately. They've been bumping stuff like wild. Okay, so we're gonna take the Orioles. We're gonna take the Reds. And we're gonna take the Dodgers. We can look on better. I, I don't know if there's anything on better right now. Tatis over HR at one and a half is good. They still have no low over hits allowed here. And they have Altman too. Let's see. Yeah, that's very true. That is kind of when they began to. Tighten up for sure is when they added the dynamic stuff. I'm trying to make a slip over there right now for you. And I mean, I have plenty of money in that account and I'm like not using it, so. Might as well use it, right? Let's see. You see uh, Tatis hit two bombs last night? That was some kind of nice. Crush both those things. Just not really a whole lot on here right now. Let's go uh, Outman. Um, and then, how about this game? Can I take Joe Ryan here? He's at 16 and a half here. Um, how about how long? Yeah. That's six? Perfect. Put 25 on. Bang, bang. I just got a better slip for you. I'm sending it out right now. It's pretty good, man. It's a pretty good slip, I think. Just sent that to you. Let's see if there's anything on. Underdog. Not really. Um, okay. Guess I'm driving. Yes, sir.
can't take anything there. Connor Joe. Do we go Connor Joe over a hit? Or is there somebody in this Texas game that we can take? Adolis Garcia is only at 1.25 payout, though. Let's do this. Okay, I got a sleeper slip coming your guys' way. We're running. Is uh this Rangers Dodgers stack still on here? Okay, maybe I'll share this one. All right, well, I think we've done a pretty good job of running through that NBA, <laughs> NBA, uh, baseball slate right there. Ugh. Why is my boy winning lineups on Lance Lynn over three and a half strikeouts and Marcus Stroman two and a half Ks? Why... Why are you taking two of the worst strikeout pitchers possible? I don't like that. What are you doing, winning lineups? My boy, I hate that. Really don't like that. Ballsy, but I like it.
Okay. I think we're good here. Um, maybe we'll have some MLB Live stuff. Um, but until then, I'll see you guys very soon.